And we are live. Welcome to Two Flippin' Dudes, everyone. I am Jason, your host, and I'm with Chris, my co-host. Tonight, we take on the reselling world. We answer your questions. We talk about all things reselling. So thank you so much for coming tonight and joining our show. Chris, welcome to the show. What is up, Jason? I love the background. Looks great back there. Looking good. Well, yeah, thanks. I made some changes with our extra week off this last week. So decided it was time to get, get a... Something to look at in the background there. I love uh, the shag Yeti. Is that what we're calling him? He's got the, the arm up over the glove. He's just like chilling up there. He's got, he's got his leg, like one leg crossed too. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. That's right. The shag Yeti is there. It's on <laughs> sale on my eBay store and you can buy it tonight. <laughs> this is a good, I, with the weather across the, the country right now, I think sh uh, shag Yeti would fit in just about anywhere right now. Yeah, but, that's uh, right. On an honest note, thinking a lot about uh, all of you out there who are, who are either watching live or watching this recording, like thinking about a lot of you are pretty cold um, and, and maybe dealing with some po power outages and some, you know, water burst, you know, burst pipes and all that stuff. So sending love uh, your way for sure. Hi, hi, Terry from icy Virginia. That's a part of the country that's colder than it typically is this time of year. That's right. Yeah. And your, your background looks good, too. You've got some nice crisp pieces back there. I like it. Absolutely. Everything sitting behind me, uh, you know, on the, on the shelf there is, uh, is stuff that I picked up this week. So I always say I'm going to keep some show pieces back there, but I think it's just more fun to like throw out some, I always have like this fresh, cool, like, I don't know, I think it's like show worthy stuff back there. So I'm just going with that theme of just putting fresh, fresh inventory behind me. Well, it looks really good. I just want to thank those of you who are watching already. We've got a handful of people in the live show and, I just want to say thanks. And as always, we've been picking up new viewers every week, which has been fun. So if you are new, welcome to the show. Thanks for jumping in. But please let us know that this is your first show to catch in the, in the chat. We'd love to see it. And while you're there in the chat as well, we want to do something a little different this week. We just want to start off by asking you what you're selling. So we've been gone two weeks since we've done the last show. What is an item you've sold in the last two weeks? Could be your biggest flip, could be something really interesting, could have just been something that went fast or something slow. It doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel like putting in there, what's a bit, what's a good flip for you? Give us the details. What'd you pay for it? What'd you sell, sell the item for? And what was it? We'd love to see that. Well, um, tonight we're going to be talking about, we're going to have another segment that Chris is going to be taking um, later tonight, and I, I won't say anything about it, but Chris, I'll let you kind of mention what is it we're going to be talking about tonight on tonight's show. Absolutely. Tonight, I'm going to show you four common spring and summer shoes uh, that you should be buying and, and selling right now. And that sounds crazy because I know it's cold across a lot of the country, but we're moving from uh, really quickly from winter selling season into spring summer selling season as far as retail is concerned. So I'm excited about that. I got uh, four really common items too. stuff. I'm not just showing you rare vintage heat. I'm going to show you some stuff that's uh, that you're going to find in your thrift stores locally. All right. Well, I'm excited for that and couldn't be a better time because as you mentioned, we, you know, spring is quickly coming. People are already gearing up. So be on the lookout for that later tonight. And as always, if you have questions for us, please go ahead and put it in the chat now. You may be new, um, maybe not new. Maybe you've just got a random question from a scenario that happened this week and you're looking for some advice. And Chris and I will try the best we can to help uh, help you with any questions you may have. But maybe there's someone in the chat that could help you as well. So go ahead and put it in and you, you may get answered tonight. We hope to um, grab some of these questions and, and answer as best we can. So. Anyways, well, let's go ahead and get started because uh, I'm ready to get rolling on this show, Chris. We've got a really good amount of people in. So why don't you tell those people that may be new and this is their first show tonight, what, what is this show? What is this hour all about? Well, welcome everybody to Two Flippin' Dudes. This is a live weekly show by resellers for resellers. Jason and I do this show for three simple reasons. Number one, we love reselling. Uh, number two, we love talking about reselling. And number three, we hope that you walk away from this episode and every episode with a knowledge nugget or two or an idea to improve your reselling business or get one started. So thanks for joining us tonight and happy Thursday, everyone. Well, that's who we are. And that's what this show is all about. We've got some great comments coming in of things sold already. So Brad, four pairs of Tommy John underwear for $102. Wow. 
It's a great flip right there, Brad. Don't sleep on underwear. That's right. Let's hope they were all brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 5280 finds. This is Lynn in uh, just out of Denver, Colorado. Sold a pro line Denver Broncos winter coat for $80, paid six for it at the thrift store. Lynn, that's an amazing flip, by the way. Where did you find that coat in Denver? Chris and I, obviously, you know this, but are both former Denver natives. Or I, I would say natives, but I would say we used to live in Denver. I don't know if we can qualify as natives. I don't see any others in the chat. Um, so go ahead and put those in if you do have some sales this week that you want to tell us about, and we may get to those. But let's go ahead and do what we always do at this time. We show you some items that we thrifted this week. So Chris, I'm going to kick it off to you first. Give us, some, give, a, give us a couple of really exciting pieces that you found. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go with some heat right away. And... Uh... Look at this thing. Is that an L.L. Bean leather jacket? It is a vintage L.L. Bean leather bomber jacket. Let's zoom in on this tag here. Look at that thing. Dude, that is a beautiful find. And actually, you can see what I paid for it, too. That's the tag. I picked it up at the Salvation Army yesterday. Uh, it was half off day, so I paid $10. This jacket, it's hard to see on the, you know, on the screen here, but the jacket is basically in perfect condition. Um, which is rare for you know a vintage leather jacket that's been worn and stuff. Usually these things get dried out and there's scratches and scuffs, but a uh, really amazing find. I'm super psyched about it to pay $10 for it. Should be a pretty quick flip too, based on, on recent sales. Um, I think I, I'm going to price that at $79 plus shipping and take some offers, but uh, I've never found anything quite like that before. Yeah. I, I didn't know they made leather jackets. So that's, that's a great find. I mean, I would have done a little dance in the store if I came up on that and saw that for the first time. There might have been some dancing involved for sure. <laughs> uh, what else you got over there? Um, so this was another like total home run from yesterday, again, on half off day from the Salvation Army. This was uh, this was at a different store. I went to two stores yesterday and just really crushed it yesterday, by the way. I'm really grateful for a big day. But here we go. You recognize that tag. Yeah. Patagonia, size XL. As I zoom out, Jason, tell me the model. You know the model. Oh, man. That one I'm not as sure on. I want to say Karsten, but I could be wrong. This is the better sweater, Jason. Better uh, sweater. Okay. This is a really, uh, really common, like sought after. This thing will. I, so the story behind this is I'm at the Salvation Army. I just cruised through the jacket section and I was moving on towards the short sleeve shirt section. And I turned back and I noticed that though, uh, the woman who worked there was restocking the jacket section. So and she was just wrapping up a restock. I approached to where she went. And first thing I saw was uh, this. Uh, actually, it was this one back there. So yeah, spoiler alert, I found three of these in a row. So I see the green one first. And I'm like, oh, I grabbed that. And I couldn't believe it because it was $6.99. Wasn't even priced up at, at all. Um, so I was like, okay. I'll take that. I grab it. I throw it in the cart. I turn back around and right behind it is this one, the gray one. Um, no way. Okay. So I pick that one up, but this time I'm like <laughs> looking behind it. And then the red one that you see back there was, was behind it too. They're all three in excellent condition. And they were all seven bucks like each all seven. I think they were seven. I already popped the tags off. I think they were seven, but half off. So no two. way. Yeah. So crazy fine and these things i mean i i just listed them today i listed them for 54 plus shipping so we could be talking about like a quick like 11 dollars into i don't know i guess like conservative i'll accept offers but conservatively 135 plus shipping yeah. easy for that so yeah and those i mean they're like a lighter weight fleece they're not like a heavy heavy so they'll still sell into the spring i mean that's an amazing find right there yeah, man. Why don't you, well, before you show us some heat, I want to find show something else that I picked up this week, but this is a little different. And I think I have my hat turned around backwards um, to hide it from you, Jason, because I see what's on your head. But boom, there it is. You no way. Zoom in a little closer. Look at that. Hang on. Let me get you in here. Look at that thing. I like that. Thrifted by Inks Co. Uh, this is from 
my boy Rick, uh, who's a fellow reseller um, and a content creator on TikTok and uh, and crushing it on the eBay game. But look how cool that logo is. Um, so this is an, a really welcome gift. I love trucker hats. Like that's my game. And this one is just super comfy. So rocking this thing. And uh, yeah, yeah, the sticker too. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, he sent me this hat as well. And uh, I, I had commented on his logo and just said, I love your logo. It's awesome. Uh, this is his TikTok picture as well. And so he's like, I'll send you a hat. So I was like, yeah, sweet. It's, it's, a, it's a really sweet hat. Yeah. How cool is this community, right? That just uh, unsolicited gift from from Rick with just an, a kind note about, you know, appreciating, you know, answering his questions and appreciating just sharing knowledge and stuff. And that's what this thing is is all about i don't solicit gifts from anybody but gosh when I yeah get a, when i get a cool trucker hat like you know you got a uh, you you know you got a piece of my heart that that easy yeah so rick if you are watching thanks so much we appreciate it um i'm gonna show a couple of mine but i want to i want to highlight a couple of people that have commented on items they've sold this week styled by um darter it says calvin klein puffer vest sold for 25 paid 78 cents for it Dang, that's a good cost of goods right there. And uh, yeah, and on top of that, first item to sell in the same day, one hour after listing. That that's amazing. Way to go! Um, I'm not sure if you got that at the Benz or not, but 78 cents. It sounds like it was a Goodwill Benz purchase. Um, how quick that is! Like, I mean, you could post something for for you could have posted that jacket for free on Facebook Marketplace, and it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been gone that quick. Like, that's a wild fast sale. Yeah, that really is. And Lion Creek Boutique says vintage Ralph Lauren men's blazer made in Italy, three button, sold for one twenty eight, paid ten. Way to go! That's amazing. One hundred twenty eight dollars. I've got to start uh, looking for some of those vintage blazers like that because I've never gotten that much or close to for a men's blazer used. Let's go, Lion Creek. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm going to start off with vintage. I'm going to keep up with Lion Creek's vibe of vintage vibes. I'm going to show you a piece I actually picked up last week, and I don't think this is going to be new to anyone out there, but check that brand out. Yes, the Umbros. And I can't see, it's kind of hard to pick up, but this is like really bright neon green athletic shorts. Um, I've actually found these before. They were like men's small, but these are a better size, large. And so... Um, paid four bucks for these. And I think I can get around like 30, I'd say conservatively 30. There are comps around 30 to 35. So um, these vintage Umbro shorts, you remember those from our childhood? I feel like I, you know, from fourth grade to probably sixth grade um, for four months of the year, I just lived in those Umbro shorts. So it's probably those same exact ones, different colors, but uh, yeah, right on. Yeah, I say, I say four months because I, I was in New Hampshire at that. I grew up in New Hampshire, so we weren't wearing shorts for much of the year. You had a small window of time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Jay Chesley says, hey, guys, new to the whole game. This is my first time watching. So Jay Chesley, welcome to the show. Um, says they uh, he, he or she follows us both on TikTok. So thanks for jumping in. Glad to see you here. All right. this I actually... Um, so I had a friend over this last week and I haven't thrifted since probably last Wednesday. So this is my first time out. I went literally three hours before our show and just hit one store, just had to get out. I was itching and I found this piece right here, brand new with tag. Um, tag's kind of ripped, but not a big deal. And it's Banana Republic. And this is a great summer item right here. I'm actually going to stand back, but you can't really tell, but this is 100% linen and it's a Banana Republic blazer. And uh, again, new with tags, I paid, I paid six bucks for it and I haven't looked up comps, but I would assume if I were to sell this used, I would get around 40 for it. So I think I'm going to price this, you know, 60, 70, somewhere in that, in that range. And, um, you know, a linen blazer sells really well in the summer. So stoked about that find right there. That's great. Yeah, this is, I mean, it's, I'm glad you brought up the blazer thing as we're transitioning from retail winter season into retail spring season real quick is, is all of a sudden people are looking for those lighter blazers too. So yep. silk and linen is going to be uh, in now. Yeah, and I'm going to go one more and then I'll kick it back to you. But I see your jersey hanging up there in the back. And coincidentally, for the first time in a long time, I found a jersey at the same store that I found that blazer at. I haven't picked up a jersey and I don't know how long I used to pick them all up all the time and 
just haven't found any worth picking up. I do have to throw a disclaimer out because this player is probably on the trading block. They're probably going to be traded to another team, but he's a good enough player that I thought it doesn't matter. And I'll show you why. Got this beautiful Texans, JJ Watt, Nike on field Jersey. Yeah. He's probably going to be traded to the team that's hanging in the back of your picture back there. But, uh, Oh, you think so? Well, there's a lot of speculation that he's going to go to the Browns, but we'll see. I haven't been following it that hardcore, but I did some research right before <laughs> I, when I was looking up this Jersey, but, uh, this is a two XL and it looks like it hasn't been worn. Um, so that, those are all great things as to why I picked it up. I did pay $11 for it, but, um, there was a sold comp for 35 on this guy. And I think I can, you know, aim around that 35 to $40 range and still hopefully get in the thirties for that. So we'll see how, how JJ Watt does on the eBay market. Little teaching moment for, I know you know this, but for some of our users or our, our viewers who might not be familiar with this, but when a player gets traded, uh, that Jersey from their former team, usually those prices plummet. And um, part of that is you see them on clearance at places like TJ Maxx and all that stuff, uh, but people don't want it anymore. However, that's not the case when you talk about like the real legends of the game. Exactly. Know? So you can buy a LeBron jersey from any of his stops, right? And that's still going to hold value. Um, so, but it's interesting. I hadn't thought about Watt, um, but he, I think he could, you know, kind of qualify for that, you know, legends of the game. I mean, I think a three-time defensive player of the year, right? So, um, and he was really the biggest name on that team for a number of years. Now Watson is, is there, or at least is, is there for the time being. But I think that, I think people will will still be buying that jersey even in a year wherever yeah. you yeah and that you know i had to think about it for a while for that reason but um it's just it's like you said when you find a player that is one of the best players in their league you know there's still going to be a texan after he gets traded that says i want that jersey i love the guy regardless of where he goes and so um you know worst case i sell it for 15 or 20 bucks and i break even in on a break even on it but i still think I should be get, getting a minimum of 30 on that because it's a 2XL. <laughs> I mean, he's already almost a no doubt Hall of Famer at this point. Yeah, so exactly. Assuming he has a couple of reasonably productive years left, he's probably first ballot. So, yeah. Well, enough about my stuff. Let, let's see another item that you have. I think you're going to be proud of me, Jason. As you know, I haven't, I don't spend a lot of time in the pants section over the past year or so, but I've been branching uh, out a little bit. I've been, I would say, um, when I go through the shirts and jackets i'm pretty much going through every single item um you know just like going through the racks in the jeans i sort of peruse you know and i look at a, a few here and there i'm scanning the labels um but i came across these they actually almost jumped off the rack at me whoa love those ariat m4s i've sold those before that's funny that you even know the um, the M4 brand or the M4 model. That's uh, so it shows that your knowledge of jeans is way bigger than mine. I've sold <laughs> a fair amount of Ariat stuff, boots, um, sneakers, even which I didn't know they make until I came across them. Uh, men's like kind of flannelist but flannel button down shirts, but never the jeans. Uh, it looked like the comps were like twenty five to thirty plus shipping. Um, yeah, and it's a decent size. It's a th well, thirty-two, thirty. What would you say? That's kind of on the on the lower ends of sizes. Yeah, it is. But um, I think for the person who's going to be looking for that, you know, um, you may be okay. Okay. And I, you're you're dead on. The twenty-five to thirty plus shipping is about what I've sold those for. So consistently thirties with shipping on that. Nice. But yeah, that may, I mean, I almost tripped over those, those things were, it was like one of those ones where the item just happens to be sticking out from all the other items. And you're like walking by minding your own business. And you're like, how do I not notice that? So I don't want to attribute that to any sort of skill or hustle. Like that just sort of jumped at me. Um, yeah. That's like, what is it? Half of, uh, half of success is just, uh, it's just showing up. Right. But yeah, I showed up next one is a brand. I wanted to talk, I've been wanting to talk about this a little bit. So the brand is Quicksilver, but You'll probably see why I picked this up. It's got a pretty unique um, pattern on oh, it. Oh yeah, like a stitching and embroidery on the front. On the front. So I don't. I only pick up Quicksilver under a couple of conditions. Number one is it's got to be a pretty cool, like unique pattern like this. So this is going to stand out from you know the probably seven thousand other Quicksilvers that are that are on the market. It's also a really good time of year to be getting this kind of stuff. Um, it has to be like you know, rayon or synthetic of some sort. I don't know exactly what this one is. 
and I've, I'm typically looking for big sizes too. The other thing I've, I've had good luck with, um, and I think at this point I've had a, um, I think I've had like a big enough sample size to say this is the Waterman collection does better for me. Um, so there's yeah. a, this one isn't a Waterman, but it will say on the tag, it'll say Waterman collection. I just feel like people are using that keyword and finding them. So yeah. anyway, pick, pick this up for four bucks. Don't go running out of here, picking up every quick silver that you've ever seen. Uh, but look for these unique ones, you know, things like with fish on them and stuff, I, I think will do better. So wanted to kind of show that off. And it's one of those shirts, like it feels nice in the hand too, you know? Yeah. I'm sure there are tons of those where you are, just those Hawaiian style casual button up shirts. Yeah. And actually I sold a Quicksilver. It was a better size. It was an X, I think it was, it might even have been a 2XL, but similar to that, where it was a bright color. It had flowers just like in a stripe across the middle. It sold for a uh, full asking price this week. Uh, I think it was twenty five ninety five dollars uh, plus shipping. Might have been twenty four ninety five. dollars Oh, wow. So you got close to 30 bucks for it. Yeah, just about right on 30 bucks for it, right? So, um, but a lot of Quicksilver selling. If you look, just looked at Quicksilver comps, you'd probably see a lot of stuff that's selling in the 15 to 20 range, including shipping, right? Yeah, so that's where it's like having that that level of knowledge, that second level knowledge, knowing it's not just about the brand name, right? It's about looking at some of these other things too. Yep, completely agree with you on that. I'll show you guys. Uh, I'll show you a non clothing item that I picked up as well, and the rest of these are all at that same store that I thrifted this uh, like three hours ago, four hours ago. That's awesome. Um, this bowl, I'm always looking for these like large serving bowls. And this has like a really nice, let's see if I can get it the right direction here, uh, like Italian countryside theme, floral. Um, and the brand, never heard of it before, but Ceramica Quare or Quare or something, design made in Italy. I'll show you the back. You can see I paid just under five bucks for that full price. But there was a plate that had uh, not this, it was a serving bowl. It had a very similar pattern that sold for around 40. Um, and I think it may have been a little bit smaller. So this is like 13 and a half inches diameter. So I'm going to try for 40, 40 to 50 in there somewhere. That's obviously including shipping, but um, I love those serving bowls. They, they sell really well and it's just one piece. So you don't have to worry about other dishes like clanging around against it. You know, you just pack it well and off it goes. And you've been crushing those those serving bowls lately. You're onto something. Yeah, which you know they take up a lot of space, and you know if you're willing to ship it right, you can make some money. So that thing's beautiful, man. Like what a little romantic scene that is. It is, yeah. So I was banging around in in that section too, and yesterday I had a couple of wins. I'll show you. Actually, both of them they are both right in front of me. So this is a brand I haven't picked up before. This is Lily Pulitzer. You can see I've, it heard, right I've heard that name before, but I couldn't I've have heard told other you. resellers flipping it, you know, on their TikTok and YouTube. So I've always kind of like been aware of that brand and I wouldn't say I'm looking for it, but it's been kind of stored in the back there and came across, you know, I always like flip over unique looking mugs. Um, this was definitely kind of unique quality looking and found that. And I was like, Hey, hold on. I know this. And it says right here, live a colorful life. So nice. uh, comps are, strong 20 to 25 dollars plus shipping really for, yeah and like a pretty like consistent sales track record of, of this specific mug with the pink flamingos on it so that's a good uh good bolo wait let me there. see that again was that pink flamingos i guess i didn't get a good look at it, it looked like something else oh i can see it now yeah that's really cool yeah i guess if you look at it really quickly it could you could just think it's like Flower. I thought it was like a floral print or something trees. yeah it looks like uh palm trees with uh with flamingos hanging out so um, I think there's probably value in just about, I'm not an expert in Lily Pulitzer, but I feel like you're probably looking at some value, maybe not 20 to 25, but on just about anything, Lily, Lily Pulitzer for mugs. Here's another mug I found too, Mug Life, bro. Whoa, check that out. So not all Disney mugs are created equal, um, but I thought that this was kind of unique, right? With that message that people really love. When yeah. we, we, the Lion King just had the reboot recently too. And uh, Akuna Matata. So uh, uh, comps on this are strong. Really consistent sales history, fifteen to to twenty five dollars. Um, so I just listed this one today for I think probably twenty three, and that's a typical pricing strategy for me. If I see the the cluster of sales being fifteen to twenty five, I usually tuck it right under, and end up being like the you know ninetieth percentile and accept offers. So we'll yeah, see. 
this uh, I'm drinking out of it tonight, but maybe by next week it'll be gone. <laughs> Terry's commenting on your last mug. Lily is a classic. Um, and Chris, you may not know this since it's the first time you found it, but I'm curious, what is what does a classic Lily mug look like? Does it have like always have the handle print or is there like a certain look? Terry, if you know that or anyone in the chat, love to know what what does a classic Lily mug look like? Like to be yeah. looking out. Usually with like Starbucks, you can always find the logo on the outside. But if you're looking at the mugs real quick, how how would one know that it's a Lily Pulitzer mug? Yeah, you're asking the the wrong ombre here, but maybe uh, maybe Terry knows. And Chris, on that, like, what's uh, just a follow up question on mugs? Like, for maybe some people that are new to the game, like, what's uh, uh, I guess, give us your strategy on if you're sitting there, what's the most you'd pay for a mug, or how much do you need to get in order to consider like one mug worth picking up? The mugs in my market tend to be more expensive, so uh, most of the thrifts are pricing them at like one ninety nine. Um, Occasionally they're like 118, but a lot of them are 199. And if it's Goodwill, they're they're typically cherry picking like Starbucks and Disney ones and like brands that they recognize, Hershey's and stuff like that. And they'll put them even higher, like 399, 499. For me, with a mug, I have a lower uh, my threshold. Like I'm willing to have a lower profit margin on mugs than I am on clothing. Uh, clothing on average is taking me roughly about. Uh, I think in January, my, my average item sold in 74 days or 72 days in January. So it was in my inventory for 72 days. So you're talking about two and a half months, but clothes were more on like the 95 to hundred and everything else was a little bit lower and brought down that average. But mugs for me, if you're picking the right mugs, they're going to move pretty quickly um, compared to clothing. So talk about like an average sale of something like I don't know, a month and a half maybe. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't mind if that thing, uh, you know, instead of making a typical like twelve to thirteen dollars is what I'm looking to make net after shipping and fees for a mug, I'm okay with making eight bucks. Yeah, um, because it'll probably sell faster. It's actually easier to list for me, um, so that's a factor. And they're way easier to if you're not shipping mugs and you're scared of shipping mugs. It's way easier, y'all, than you think. I mean, I shipped, I packed one today, a Starbucks mug, and it's literally I wrap it in. I have like this scotch or a craft paper, they call it, you know, that uh -huh. brown paper, but you can use newspaper, right? Wrap it in newspaper, wrap it in like three layers of bubble wrap and jam it in a box. that's like eight by six by four or a priority box, the free priority boxes that are eight by seven by seven, roughly. Like it's a little almost square box and they're great. And it's so easy. Um, and the, the listings like super easy too. you, you know, I, I wash it and I take like, six or seven photos of it from all the different angles and you know it's easy no you know no measuring and you know all that stuff like you have to do with clothing yeah i'll have to remember that because i forget that you can find those or actually not that i forget i didn't know that you could find those uh priority mail boxes that fit those mugs really well and so i'll have to order some of those when we get off here yeah it's roughly eight by seven by seven if, if i don't know if they have like a code name for it i'll look it up while, while we're talking here but i i use that box a ton yeah. And Terry is responding to, you know, the prompt on Lily is more popular in clothing. You can tell by the colorful print, Southern preppy vintage Lily clothing sells well. So it sounds like clothing is more the market for that. And maybe she just made a mug or something, but um, yeah, I'll have to keep my eyes open. I don't get into the women's section that much, but if I find a Lily, I will look it up. So thank you, Terry, for uh, letting us know on that. And we're always learning. We're always looking for different brands to flip, different things that we can find. If we're going to be at the store, we might as well have a wider base of knowledge to, to select from when we're looking at stuff. So um, stay hungry and keep learning. I'm going to show one more item. And then Chris, um, I'll queue up our segment for uh, summer shoes to be on the lookout for. So let me show this guy right here. I saw this, uh, I saw this sleeve kind of hanging off. The rack. Well, that's not really the sleeve, but you can kind of see the color pattern. Any ideas what you think this item would be based on the sleeve? Can you show me again? I'm sorry. Can I have it in a sentence? Language of origin. <laughs> you got some color blocking going on there. Uh, it looks like it's a button up shirt. I don't know. My first thought was Ralph Lauren just because of the color blocking, but honestly, I don't know. Yeah, well, your first thought is right. It is a polo right. Ralph Lauren. That's a sweet pull, man. Yeah, I got the XL and Regent, which I don't really know what Regent means. I, I've seen a couple of different pieces that have like specific names. But uh, the only downfall is it doesn't have the 
Uh, there's no horse logo on the front. But for something like this, I'll make an exception. Most of you know I don't pick up shirts if they don't, the Ralph Lauren shirts if they don't have the, the pony on the front. But for something that's like, this is clearly unique, different color, large size. If I did a search right now, which I, I haven't looked up comps, but if I did a search right now, I would guess if this shirt is out there at all with the same color, there's not gonna be more than a few. Um, so I paid four bucks for that and I'll probably list it in the high 30s and see what happens with that. But um, yeah, that was a great find today. That is an awesome find. And I think you're right on with the, I, I believe in the, you know, avoid the no pony or the no horse uh -huh. logo, right? I believe in that too, but there's exceptions to every rule. And I think color blocking is a really great e exception on that one. Yeah, Ryan says, I like that shirt. Well, Ryan, the shirt could be yours for a low, low price. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, all kidding aside, Chris, let's move on to the segment that we're excited about tonight. Show us some brands that are going to be selling very soon in our stores, items that we should be looking at when we're at the thrift. Shoes, uh, shoes, shoe items. Right on. All right. So these are items. The keyword is right. Uh, spring and summer clothes. The keyword here is that you should be looking for now. That's one keyword and the other is common. These aren't like rare heaters that I'm showing you. These are things that if you go to a handful of thrift stores over the next several days, you're probably gonna run into these things. So I want you to be able to recognize these. So I'm gonna show you four different shoes, specific ones uh, in some different styles. So the first off where you should be looking for spikeless golf shoes. So here's an example right here. This particular model is an Adidas 360 Traxian. So this isn't like a rare thing. It's a pretty middle of the road uh, spikeless golf shoe. You'll know that you're looking at a spikeless golf shoe because, well, A, there's no spikes, but you'll be able to notice those little like nubs like that. And you'll be like, well, that's a weird shoe. Like that's a weird soccer shoe or something. Right. Um, and that's actually how I first discovered spikeless golf shoes. I was like, what the heck are these shoes with these little nubs right there? So that's how you recognize spikeless golf shoes. This Adidas, Adidas 360 Traxian will sell pretty consistently for 35 to $45 on eBay. Some other models of Adidas that I look out for are the um, Adidacross. I think I'm saying that right. There's also a Tour 360, which is something to look out for. And those will sell for even higher than that $35 to $45 range. Uh, but again, they're pretty common still. Um, aside from the Adidas, some other brands that I find these in pretty commonly are Footjoy, Nike, and Echo. So be looking out for those, those little nubs on the bottom. And then shoes are easy, y'all. If you're not flipping shoes and you don't need to know what every model is, on the inside uh, tag, you're gonna notice a number, uh, specific on Adidas, the number that you're gonna look up is the ART number. So in this, it's a six digit number. So we'll say ART and there'll be six digits. Nike, it's a, also a six digit number, but it's a six digit number with a dash and then it has three more numbers. So six dash three, um, the last three are the color code. So you can just look for the first six and look it up. But be looking for those uh, spikeless golf shoes those are already selling um, and they're going to really heat up here once uh, the rest of the country thaws, hopefully over the next few days. But really, I mean, we're talking March 1st is around the corner and that stuff's going to start flying. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit about sizes. Everything I'm showing you today, you can find in both men's and women's. So for men's, I'm, I'm targeting the sweet spot is about eight and a half to 11 is what I'm looking for for men's sizes. Those are the better sizes that are going to sell a little quicker. I still buy eights. I still buy 11 and a half, 12, even 13s. I picked up a pair of 13s this week, uh, but I just anticipate that they might take a little bit longer to sell. Um, basketball shoes, however, throw that out the window. Bigger shoes do sell really well, but we're talking for the stuff that I'm showing you now, these spring, summer things. So that's uh, spikeless golf shoes. Second, running shoes. And this is a kind of a more standard style running shoe. I'm going to show you a different type of running shoe in a second. This is a Brooks Ghost 12. And you can see right there on the tongue is the Ghost. Get that in there. Ghost 12, you get it. Um, this is actually going to sell for $45 to $55 pretty consistently. So this is on the higher end of Brooks. Um, some other Brooks that I look out for are the Adrenaline series and the Glycerin series. And we'll usually like a number like Adrenaline 12 or Glycerin 18. The bigger numbers mean they're the more recent ones and typically sell for a little bit more money. But people still buy the older numbers too because they change running shoes. And people who find a running shoe that they really like and then they change it slightly and then they don't like it anymore, they like to buy that same number again. So even if it is an older number, you'll probably still see that it sells. Uh, so this is the Brooks 
Ghost 12. This is one of the higher end Brooks running shoes. Next up is our third type of shoe that you should definitely be looking out and I do looking out for and I do really well with these. So this here is a Merrill Bear Access is the is the model and you can see that on the tongue right there. So this is what you would call a minimalist running shoe or often like a barefoot running shoe. So they are you'll know that you ran into one of these minimalist shoes if it's a it's like just super lightweight but you know, it's like this thing, you can really like twist it and turn it. The idea is it's like, they're trying to make it like almost like as much of a natural, uh, like running stride as possible. So minimalist or barefoot, this one here, this Merrill bear access 30 to $40 all day. And it will really heat up here, um, in the, in the coming weeks, you're going to start seeing these things fly off the shelf. Some other Merrill's that I look for that are also minimalist are uh, all out blaze. I've been selling that. Uh, I've actually sold a few of those recently and have a few more in my inventory that I'm excited to get rid of. Also anything with the word glove in it. So there's a variety of different models. There's a vapor glove. There's a road glove. There's a trail glove. There's a true glove. If it says glove on it uh, and it's a Merrill, you're probably looking at one of these, um, one of these minimalist shoes, which are hot. Um, and that's what people are really looking for. So they feel like they're unsubstantial, so they wouldn't be worth much money, um, but they are. And then next we got sandals um, and not all sandals are worth money, but there's some great brands out here. This, these I picked up just yesterday, Chacos. And uh, so sandals tend to be priced low at thrift stores and garage sales. Cause people are like, Oh, they're just sandals. So these were two 99, whereas most shoes are more like eight bucks at my local thrifts, even higher for a lot of them. Um, but these were only three bucks. These Chacos are going to sell pretty consistently for 30 to $45. And again, I'm giving you all these prices on excellent condition shoes. Obviously if they're rougher, they'll go for, for less money. And if they're like, like new, like worn once or twice, you might get even a little bit more money. So that that's the, uh, on the bottom, all these Chacos say Vibram. That's the logo right there. Chaco. The size is always on the back heel. I picked these up in all sizes. They sell for me really quickly. I haven't listed these yet, but they will not take long. Obviously like colors that are a little bit more rare are gonna go quicker too. Um, this is kind of an uncommon color. So I think it'll go really fast. Women's size seven is pretty good. I forgot to mention when I'm looking at women's shoes, the sweet spot is size seven to nine is what I'm looking for. So this is on the bottom end of the sweet spot at seven. I still, Chacos I'd pick up in just about uh, any size. I think maybe once we get down to size five, I might ignore it. But again, these will be 30 to $45. Um, Chacos, this one is a ZX. This one's called the Z2, but there's also a Z1. There's also a ZX2. These never say it on them. You'll just see that it's a Chaco and you'll start to recognize the different models. But regardless, all the models sell well. Even the flip-flops sell well um, for Chaco for good money. Um, more on the low end, like 25 to 30. But if it's got these straps in the front and the back, you're looking at 30 to $45. Some other sandals to keep an eye out for that you'll find pretty commonly. Merrill Newports, uh, Crocs, especially unique Crocs are going to sell for good money. And Birkenstocks are another one that you'll find uh, for cheap money and you'll be able to get really good money on fast sales for. Those Chacos are amazing. And I wish I had... I wish I could find them here for what you're getting them for because the Goodwill's here on them. And so they price them at like 10, 15, 20 bucks. I just can't, I can't pick them up for that, but good for you. Three bucks. That's a, that's a deal. See, my problem is I keep finding Chacos that are in my wife's size, which means I can't sell them. Uh, but this <laughs> one is a, a seven. They got to uh, go to her to first and then they get past the eBay if, if he denies them. Absolutely. So those are four shoes you should be looking out for. Look out for those, uh, those spikeless golf shoes. Look out for those running shoes. Look out for those minimalist running shoes. Those are great. They'll sell really fast for me. And look out for those, uh, those like outdoor sandals. Vibram soles is always a good thing to look for in just about any shoe. Yeah. I'm curious on those, um, like the minimalist barefoot shoes that you were showing, have you, how do you ship those? Like, because they are lightweight, usually those things can be under a pound, right? Do you ever ship those first class or is it always priority mail for you? Uh, these can go first class. I've shipped them first class, especially some of the smaller women's ones. Um, and if they are over a pound, I'll put them in a padded flat rate envelope. So, I mean, you're first class for these, you're probably talking upper fives because it's probably like 13 ounces, which is that next tier. Um, but yeah, I talk about 585 to ship those across the country. And if it's a little bit heavier, if it's over a pound, you're talking 776 in a USPS padded flat rate envelope. 
Yeah, those are all great. I mean, those that's that's a really good selection of shoes to be looking for. Um, so any of us watching, if you find any one of those, I mean, you can make some really good money on any one of those shoes. So and these aren't rare. These are things that I run into all the time. These aren't vintage heaters, you know, one off stuff. If you're looking for rare stuff, I do have a, a golf shoe right here. Uh, this is a spikeless golf shoe. It's kind of a different pattern right there, but you can still see all those little nubs. Uh, this is a Tiger Woods 2014 model. I have the only one currently listed on eBay in this model in this color scheme, which is the black and gold. Mine's the only one that's listed for less than $149. Um, and there's no sale. way used. Yes. Wow. That's that is crazy because I've sold those exact same shoes, exact same color with the gold accents. I think I got around like 65, but mine are listed why. for 79 right now. Um, and I'm yeah. the on the market, of course, I'm going to accept offers and mine are in a little bit rougher shape. Um, but I, I disclosed all the, it's, it's faults and failures, took really close up photos of them. And, uh, but I'm telling you like the next, the next one is 149 and there's some that are yeah. close to 200 currently listed. Well, and that could have something to do. I mean, that's probably been a year and a half to two years since I sold mine. So it just shows you that the market changes and what one thing may be one year, it's different the next year. And maybe, uh, you know, Tiger winning the masters had something to do with that. I'm not sure, but, um, yeah, that's a great find. That's an, that's an awesome shoe right there with great color. So I told you I was going to stick to stuff that's super common. And so I didn't mean to, you know, then throw out like a rare vintage piece at you, but really the, all the other stuff that I showed you, these Brooks, you know, I run into these all the time. Um, I forgot to mention some other running shoes that are really common that you'll probably run into. Solomon's are really common. Uh -huh. Some of the A6 and Sauconies, just look up the model number again. Everyone will have a model number uh, right on the inside tag right there. Just look up comps that way to figure out some of the higher end like Sauconies and A6. Those will sell. And then some a little bit uh, more rare ones, Newton's. Uh, Hoka one ones and on yeah. clouds. And the reason I mentioned those to you is because even though they're rare, a lot of other resellers won't recognize them. Um, and uh, like just or goodwill and consumers won't recognize them and goodwills won't recognize those yeah. brands. So you'll walk right behind other resellers uh, and you'll be able to scoff these things up for cheap. So look out for Newton's on clouds and Hoka one ones. Hoka one one is fairly common at this point. Newton and on cloud is a little bit more rare. Yeah. And I I've heard of people you know, like if you go buy a brand new pair of Hoka's, you're going to look at paying 140 and up for brand new. I mean, you're just not going to find them cheaper unless it's like a rare, you know, uh, discontinued model or something. But um, a lot of people, especially runners who aren't sure, you know, if they're considering switching brands, they may buy a used shoe for half the price just so they can try it out to know if they want to go buy a brand new shoe or switch to Hoka or stay with A6 or whatever it is. So. That's true. And even more commonly, like I mentioned earlier, people fall in love with the model that they have. Um, so if it's the Clifton 4, which is the model that they really like, they might not like the Clifton 6 or whatever is out right now because they changed something about it and they're always changing those shoes. So uh, yep. so that's another thing is people are, you might be like, this is an old model. Who's going to buy it? Well, somebody's looking specifically for that one because they don't want the new model, right? Yeah, well, Chris, thanks for sharing that with us. And uh, hopefully those of us watching will be able to um, be able to find some of those in the next week or two. All right, well, it's that time. I I'm ready to play a flipping game. Are you? Let's do it. Let's play a flipping game. Uh, so what we have here is uh, two contestants. We have five questions. Jason and I are answering those questions based on this week. We're basing it on on sales and fines over the past 14 days because we didn't have a show a week ago. So uh, last 14 days is wide open. We're not talking to you about sales from December. We're talking about the last two weeks. Um, and question number five is important. We're going to need the audience participation for that one. So hang in for question number five. You're going to vote on who gets the point for question number five. I've lined us up. I'm going to keep score. We have a flipping scoreboard. Jason with the shoes, Chris with the shirts. Let's dig in. I am your winner from last week, your defending champion. So I will go first and we'll start with question number one, the biggest sale of the past two weeks. And you can go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> A preview of another one. Here it is, Larry Legends. This is an autographed. Uh, Whoa, look at that. From uh, the 1920 Mosaic set. This is a cool card. 
Um, so I'm going to zoom in on this. It is numbered to 25. So there's only 25 of this particular card. This is the gold version of this card. There's also a silver one that's a little more common. I picked this one up back in the fall. I paid about, I think I paid $125 for it. It sold for a grand total of $165. So not a really big sale price at 165, not a huge margin for me, mm. um, but either way, um, you know, moved it out. I thought it was going to be more like a $250 card, but so I jumped on it. I pounced when they first, the mosaics were first out and, uh, but yeah, I'm still happy. I made a little bit of profit and I had this in my collection for, uh, for a few months and got to show it off to some people. It's a cool card. And Larry Bird is, is one of my favorites and definitely an all time great. Is this something that you had listed the whole time or you just decided to list it? Um, you know, at a certain point or were you like watching this card to see the value? How did you, how did you list this? With this particular card, because of the rarity, I just left it listed and I had it listed at 195 the entire time. And I was just waiting for the right person to come stumble upon it. And lo and behold, I got a lot of offers. I got a lot of low offers and I got a lot of fair offers um, that were close to what I paid for it. Uh, but I knew that I would find somebody who would want this card and I, I, that I'd be the only one on eBay with it um, and they'd be willing to pay up for it. And lo and behold, it sold to a, someone who self-identified as being a, uh, a Celtics fan. Um, it shipped to, I forget what town in Massachusetts, but it was shipping to Massachusetts. And the person put that in their offer. They were like, I'd really love this card. I'm a Celtics fan. I'm not a flipper. You know, I, I really that makes you feel that. even better. It's like, all right, it's going to the right person. Absolutely. And going yeah. to the right person with the right amount of money in their pocket. So that's yeah. important too. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to keep mine short because you definitely got me on this one. But oh, look at that. There's an offer. Um, I sold this. You may have seen those that watched my YouTube channel. I posted this in a video last week. Um, had it at that 95 plus $12 mark. This is a, an Aaron Crafts. But really, the reason why this sold for so much, as you can see right there, the Ireland on the tag and 100% Merino wool. You can tell by the pictures, this is a heavy um, cable knit sweater with the hood. Um, I'm always looking for Ireland or wool or both. And I got an offer for $82 that's including shipping and took it on this bad boy within a week of listing it. So I paid six fifty dollars for it. I sold it for $82 and I didn't get the win on, in the game for this round, but I'm very happy with that, um, that sale right there. It's a great sale. You might not have gotten the win there, but you got more profit uh, than I did on mine and you sold it a lot quicker. So... All right, let's uh, jump right into round number two. We're talking about the biggest profit from the last two weeks. So biggest profit on one single item after shipping and fees. So I'm, uh, I got my, I'm going to go first. Mine is queued up. All right, here you go. So I sold a brand new inbox pair of Reebok Speed Trainer TRs, Flex Weave. Flex Weave is definitely something to look out for. It's hot in shoes right now. I picked these up brand new in the box. Um, I forget how long ago it was probably back in the spring. So I've had them for a little while, but I bought three pairs of them, uh, all the same size. So this is the last of the three to sell. And I got, what did I get for those? I got, I wrote it down. Oh, I got, a. I don't know what I got, but I made 20. I wrote down, I made $29. In profit. I don't know what the offer was, but whatever it was, uh, I made $29 in profit. I did not have any like really uh, screaming profit items this week, but 29 bucks is pretty good. And especially on a, like a retail arbitrage where I sold three of them. Yeah. That's a great shoe right there. Um, do you remember how much you paid for it? Just out of curiosity. Um, I should. It's okay. If you don't know, I was just curious. I'll tell you in a one second. I'm guessing you probably got them for 15 or 20. If you made 30 bucks, I paid 23 bucks and I sold them for $70, including shipping. Nice. All right. Well, I'll show you mine. Some of you who've watched the show will remember these plates. This was my coolest find a few weeks back. These uh, set of three sting plates. Awesome pieces here. They had the gold rim on each of them. They were all numbered. So limited edition on the back. And uh, I mean, just take a look at these three pieces right here. I paid 10 bucks for these total at Goodwill. I knew when I saw them, I was picking them up. Didn't have to look up comps, but I did. They sold quicker than I thought they would. I got $65 with shipping on these three plates. And let's see here. That profited me $39.93. That's awesome. All right. So I'm not, I just realized I'm not keeping up on our scoreboard, but we have a tied game. Where did I put the scoreboard? Feels good to be tied after round two. <laughs> 
yeah, there's usually someone who kind of runs off to like a 2-0 or a 2-0 lead typically. So let's update this scoreboard and move into round number three. So Jason with the shoes, with one, Chris with the shirts, one. We got a spirited battle right here, and we're moving into fan favorite, that fastest sale. Everyone thinks that we're just flipping stuff really fast. Most of our stuff takes a while, but every now and again, you got something that moves really quick. Jason, I'm ready to go with mine. All right, here it is. So y'all, um, I listed this uh, Polo Ralph Lauren shirt. It is a size large, so I broke my own rule of uh, I only do XL Plus in Polo Ralph Lauren, but I always, I, I frequently break that rule if it's, a, if it's a rare item. And this is a little bit more rare because of, it's a silk and it's got the horse down below. So the, the model is called well, but the important thing is you can see it right there. I think you can see it. There it is. 71% so oh, wow, yeah. 29% went in right so I'm going to break that rule I listed it I paid f four bucks for this uh, bad Larry and it sold in one hour and five minutes for a best offer of uh, $20 plus five shipping so made a quick one hour profit. one hour in five minutes and I'm telling you this I I feel I have to go watch back the tapes but I feel like I had another like super fast uh flip that that won uh won me a point or i don't want to be pretend or i want to want to say that i won this point yet because i haven't but right uh i won a point i think with a polo less than in size xl but it was like silk and linen we have to check the tapes but i you know these things move that fast people are looking yeah. for those things well i thought i had you on this one because i had a really quick flip and this is another one of, this was actually my last show's coolest find this was that vintage air force hat um, I mean, even had the rip on the side, but I listed this for, you can see 1979 plus five shipping. I had an offer come in for $23 all in with shipping wow. 12 hours and 45 minutes after listing this. And I took that offer thinking I'm going to win this round 12 hours. That's hardly ever beat, but Chris, I got to give it to you. That's a great fast one hour flip that almost can never be beaten. <laughs> Yeah, that's hard to do. Although so, I think somebody in the chat earlier said that they had like a, a really fast flip. I think that yep. was on. Uh, so let's update this scoreboard here. I got me a small lead now. So Chris with the shirts to Jason one. And I don't mean to rub salt in the wound on that one, but I actually sold a shirt right, right before we went live and I sold it in eight hours uh, today. Wow. Um, like literally right before we went live. I was live on TikTok actually when it sold. Um, but yeah, right. let's uh, go to our next category, which is I'm disorganized here today. I don't have the sign, but we're, go we're looking at the slowest sale. This is my favorite category. I love unloading that old stuff and I have mine queued up on the screen. So there we are. I don't know if you've seen these before, Jason, but I bought a case of these ski trainers. They're for like little tykes there. You can see the little guy there with the 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 clip on his skis. He's learning how to ski. Uh, I picked these up uh, August the 31st. You know the date, 2019. <laughs> at a garage sale. I was buying out a bunch of inventory from an Amazon reseller that was liquidating and bought a case of these. Every now and again, one sells and uh, this time two sold. Uh, so for a total of $12, I had these in inventory for 527 days. I've actually, I looked it up. I've sold 11 of these since the beginning of December. So they're, they're moving. Wow. That's, that's unreal. 500 days. All right. Well, sorry. Um, let me cue mine. I'm going to get you on this one, Chris. We're going to even it up here. Yes. Eddie Bauer shirt, cotton flannel. It was a men's small. So the reason why it sat for so long is this was in excellent condition. It was a cotton flannel. It was heavy. But I listed this on, let's see here, 829. Of, so August 29th of 2018. Dang. For a total of 896 <laughs> days. <laughs> get rid of it. See you later. How much you get for it? Uh, I got, I think it was $20 all in with shipping. 19 or 20 bucks, something like that. Not bad. You got your money. You probably wouldn't pick it up again, I'm guessing. Exactly. Updated scoreboard. Jason with the shoes, two. Chris with the shirts, two. We have ourselves a battle here. This one is always important, but it's extra important this time. So we're looking at each of our best picks from the last 14 days. 
in the audience. You're going to vote to determine the winner. You're going to vote J if you think Jason's pick is cool. See if you think Chris's pick is cool. Don't vote yet. Wait till we show you this stuff. And, uh, and it doesn't have to be like the thing that you think is worth the most money or whatever. It's just the coolest thing that, um, you know, in your interpretation of cool uh, from the past couple of weeks. So I'll go first. I'm, I've never picked up anything like this before. All right, so. we got to get you full screen on this guy. Here we go. I'm pretty stoked about this pickup. This is pretty cool. So, boom, a bowling pin. What? This is at Goodwill on the, <laughs> on the top shelf, like sitting in with like all the plateware and stuff. Like, really? And it's, uh, I've never seen anything like this besides in a bowling alley. But here we go. This is like a legit like AMF, AMF Light 2. It's got all those like approved to use, plastic coated. It's actually in like, ridiculously good shape considering that this thing's life is to get smashed by a bowling ball over and over like and over and over night in and night out but i mean there's barely any wear on this thing a couple little blemishes but it almost makes me wonder like was it even like was it ever used i mean because it, you would think that this thing would be just like just trashed yeah and it could have been like you know sometimes if you have a birthday party there they give you like a bowling pen as a gift or something um it could have been like one of those commemorative things that they give the kids i think i think it's worth i think this thing's going to hang out on the table here behind me i think that's a cool enough visual piece right there well speaking of hanging out uh my piece is actually hanging out right behind me been behind me the whole time so let me go grab that and uh we'll uh we'll go full screen on this too so you guys can see it now i'm intrigued we didn't even know it was, it was like kind of hiding behind your head there it was it was just very discreet but you know, from the front, doesn't look like anything very cool, but let's take a look at the back here. Yes. Check out that Harley Davidson graphic. And it's got the Harley on the sleeve back there, the Davidson on this sleeve. It's like a rain jacket. It's a men's 2XL nylon. So just a great piece overall. And I actually, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just leave that right there for... There you go. Let's see, I... Um, let me get out of the way. I actually listed that last week and I've already got like six or seven watchers on that. I've had a couple of somewhat lower ball offers. So I'm waiting for that right buyer to come along. That's sick, man. What's it listed at? I think I've got it like 65 plus shipping. Right on. That's an awesome find. I've man. been sending counters for like 55 plus shipping. Can't get anyone to take it, but it'll sell. I'm sure it'll sell. All right. So go ahead and put in your vote. J for Jason, C for Chris. This is the deciding vote right here on who wins the round this week. And it's already split two to two right now. C for the bowling pin. J for that rad Harley jacket. Man, I don't know. It's like right down, right down the line there. I'm seeing three to three. And I'm grateful too. Like I had some really cool picks this week. I could have showed you any number of things. I guess I already showed you those Tiger Woods. I could have used those, you know, like a rare, a rare cool find. I could have, uh -huh. I got a Baker Mayfield jersey. I mean, I never I find see that it. guy hanging in the background. It's so rare to find jerseys that aren't priced up like crazy. And that one was eight bucks. Um, it was a half off to eight bucks, but especially like, I'm like, is this an old Cleveland player? No, it's Baker Mayfield. And it's the, uh, it's a good size. It's in good condition. I'm like, why is this thing eight bucks at the thrift? I, but anyway, I had some cool stuff. These hats, you know, like I could have thrown those out there. Brand new uh, Toronto hats. I, don't know. I had a lot of cool stuff. I had a great week. You really did. Right now it's five to four or uh, four to three. So if no one else is voting, it's, in, it's leaning towards me right now. Four to three. We'll give it about another 30 seconds or a minute to see if anyone else is going to vote out there that has not voted yet. Rock the vote. <laughs> Tony P says, man, still looking for some Harley. Oh, that's not it right here. Yeah, I don't. it's such a great stuff to find. Really awesome stuff. It's rare to find like Harley too that's not overpriced at thrift stores. Even garage sales, like people like try to price that stuff up because it, it's the, the proverbial, I know what I have, right? Um, so they're looking yeah. for a dollar for it. Well, Chris, I just got two more votes. It's up six to four, something like that. Seven to four. I'm up by three. I think I take it this week. 
That's it, man. You got it. It's a cool pull, man. Everyone loves Harley. It's a fan favorite. I think that was a smart go to go with the uh, with the Harley yeah, I was you know? on a couple of pieces. So I'm glad I went with that one. I wasn't sure what you had, obviously, but hey, man. If I'm gonna throw out, uh, if I'm gonna, you know, come to the game with a freaking bowling pin, uh, <laughs> and uh, and I'm gonna lose, I'm I'm happy to lose to a Harley Davidson jacket. So Jason with the shoes and the jacket to Chris with the shirts, three to two. Nice little win there. Let's update the all-time flipping record books here. This is a really high-tech uh, operation we're running over here, by the way. <laughs> Let me draw the shoe on the in the record books here. And while Chris is doing that, I'm going to go ahead and put in the question of the night up. It says, what one or what's one item or brand you wish you'd never see that you wish you'd never see in a thrift store again? Maybe it's a brand or an item that you're just tired of seeing and it's just getting in the way of sourcing. I've got some ground to make up, but I've had a, a few good weeks lately, so I'm feeling good. Yeah, Tony P says, I wonder who would have won Tiger Woods versus Harley Davidson. That would have been that would have been a, a good one. That would have been good. I've been going with the strategy of like, you know, the unique kind of out there. Fine. I'm going with that, you know, that picker mentality. That's what I've been going with. But sometimes clothing too. Yeah, Daniel said, Izod, I hear you on that. I, I can agree. Joanna mm -hmm. says, Kim Rogers. I've never heard of that brand, but then again, I'm not usually in the women's section. So not sure what uh, kind of clothing that is. I'm assuming clothing. What about you, Chris? What's uh, what's an item you wish were no longer in thrift stores? Dude, you see all the time. Alan Flusser, right? Um, <laughs> you know why, right? You know why I don't like that one. I know exactly why. It throws me off too. It looks exactly, well, not exactly. It looks a lot like Robert Graham, uh, which is one of the, you know, which is a one of the best items to pull as a clothing reseller. You love finding those Robert Grahams. They're cool, bright colors, flip cuffs and all that. And the Alan Flusser is literally like trying to be Robert Graham. And it, it, even, even in the tag, Robert Graham, it's usually cursive, you know, on the back oh, of the shirt yeah, inside. And Alan Flusser in big cursive letters on the inside. So at first glance, you're like, ooh, I just pulled a Robbie G. I just pulled $35 off the rack here, like quick 35. Nope, it's Alan Flusser, which is worth nothing. I mean, if you knew how many times I've had like this, uh, <laughs> I, I, I've literally this week I I ran across like six Alan Flussers just like that. I swear yeah. down here in Florida, like Alan Flussers, like where big where does it come from? Who sells it? Do you know? Is it like I'm guessing it's some, some kind of department store, like a Kohl's or something like that? I, I don't know. Somebody somebody shady. Yeah. Well. Um, you know, for similar reasons, and this isn't going to be a surprise to you, but um, Goodfellow for me has been that brand. And and I will say it's a it's a target brand, I'd say, in the last couple of years. But they've really stepped up their game in trying to copy kind of like Alan Flusser, copy other brands. And I've been fooled by Goodfellow. And it's like, ah, get it out of here. But um, yeah, you'll see it and you'll think, and I can't remember what it looks like, but the fabric is getting a lot closer to looking, not necessarily in quality, but just looking like really good brands. And uh, there's a lot of stores out there doing it, like Walmart brands, Target brands. They're all mimicking those higher end styles. And it's throwing us resellers off. Come on. I'll give you a couple others. And I'll probably say the names wrong because there's like two brands that are like the same to me. They look a lot like they're made to look like other brands. And it's, it's like paper and denim or something like that. Yeah, or paper yeah. and flower. There's two of them. It's like flower in something and paper and something. And they both, I think they're both like Walmart brands or something. And when I go to Marshall's sometimes to do some retail arbitrage and go through the clearance rack, sometimes in the most recent time I was there, this was true. Like 85% of the items are those two brands. And I'm like, even on clearance, these things aren't worth the six dollars. Like to even to wear, yeah. it's such yeah. a junk, you know. Yeah. Uh, Tony P says Wranglers. Sorry, sometimes this scrolls up and I end up clicking the wrong one. But I want we have a special guest who we highlighted earlier. Not sure if you saw it, Rick, but Rick thrifted by Inked, the one that gave us these hats. Rick, again, thanks a lot. Not sure if you heard us earlier, but we did a special shout out for you. He says, thanks for wearing them. And this is not a like feel good thing. This is a really legit hat. I love it. Wore it all day today. So thanks so much. 
I rocked it at the thrift yesterday, and that's probably why I had a great day. I pulled 47 items yesterday wearing this hat. Yeah, and last one, Daniel says, Faded Glory. Faded Glory. Glory. Walmart you know, brand, I think. Get, get that out of here. Yeah, and Joanna, to answer the question, Thrifted by Ink made the hat. So if you're interested and in, uh, get in touch with him, Rick, uh, that's his TikTok handle as well. And uh, reach out to him if you want a hat. So, all right. Well, Chris, this is the part of the show where it's time to say goodbye to our viewers and say goodbye to one another. This has been a great show. Great show for sure, man. And congratulations uh, on a victory, our new champion. I love it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, guys, reminder, we will be back next week. So tune in next Thursday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, another res reseller show two flipping dudes. So have a great week. Happy selling everyone. And uh, hope you find some awesome stuff and make some great sales. We'll see you.